Any audio now? <clears throat> Good. All right. So let's just uh, start back over from the top because you guys heard nothing. What's up? I am Submission Yogi Tyler Rents, and here we are again for another Wellness for Jiu-Jitsu Recovery Sunday Yoga class. We do this every week, even though we've missed a few weeks before this. So if you are one of those few that catches our lives classes and enjoys this, enjoy this uh, experience as it happens, uh, raw and uncut. We appreciate you. Sorry we've missed a few weeks, but we're back at it now. And I'm bringing you my best, my absolute favorite routine for post jujitsu yoga, getting the body to feel good uh, for after hard training. So that's our purpose here at Wellness for Jiu-Jitsu is to feel good and train hard at the same time. It is possible. Uh, follow along with me on this routine. Let us know how you feel in the comments. This is submission. Uh, sorry, this is uh, donation based yoga. So we survive by uh, your support. So even if that's clicking the like button, writing us a comment, sharing it with a friend or subscribing, we appreciate it. Links found below. Getting started here on our knees in this hero's pose or a kneeling passing pose with our toes tucked. So play around, reach back, try to spread your toes so that your feet get a nice even stretch. Your weight is sitting on top of your heels. Make it a little bit comfortable, but feel some good sensation. Take a couple deep breaths, sit up nice and straight and roll shoulders up on the inhale, back and down on the exhale. Slow circles with your breath. bringing our awareness into our body, using our breath. Stay with that foot stretch or let it go if it's intense. Switch directions of the shoulder rolls, back, up, inhale, forward and down on the exhale. Exaggerate them, but keep your neck relaxed. No stress here. Now coming to the top of your feet, if you're still in that foot stretch, bring your knees a little closer together and walk your hands back just enough to feel a little release, stretch in the quads, release in the low back. If you're flexible, you can go back all the way to your elbows, play around with your neck position, Play around with the engagement of your glutes, squeezing, lifting your hips a little bit, changing the sensations, keep the shoulders relaxed, big breath. One more big deep breath. Walking yourself back up, spread the knees wide and walk your hands forward, keeping your hips heavy on your feet until head comes to the mat, a kind of turtle pose, child's pose. Walk your hands out, sink your hips back and breathe. Recovery yoga is all about relaxing, settling into your body, calming your nervous system. Deep breathing is the key. Coming out of that pose and up to a tabletop, hands and knees. Find some nice alignment, stacking on your bones, shoulders above wrists and hips above knees. And rock forward and backward. Maybe move your spine a little bit, but we're looking for 
some sensation in our wrists. So we come forward, the wrists stretch. Now turn your palms face up, fingers facing each other. Do little push-ups as you straighten your arm, stretch your wrists, maybe making fists. Relax your face, breathe. Shake out wrists one at a time, roll them. Some nice fresh blood in our small joints, feels good. Moving into a lunge here, so from tabletop, walking a right foot up towards your hands. Maybe you got to reach back and grab it, bring it up to the line of your hands and then adjust your back leg. So you feel a nice stretch in the back of your right leg, right thigh and the top of your left. Untuck your back toes, lift your chest, take some deep breaths. One of the ways we relax in recovery yoga is to think about using the minimal necessary force to hold the position. So just try to relax as many muscles as you can, just using the ones you need to maintain a relaxed, somewhat comfortable position. Maybe doing little movements, rocking forward and backward can help you find that sweet spot breathing the whole time. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, plant your hands, fingers wide, right foot back to a plank. Take a breath. And then bring left foot forward. Drop the back knee, left foot in between hands to a low lunge. Check the spacing between your left foot and your right knee. It should be about in line with your hips, knee above ankle, and then back knee adjusted. So the stretch in your hips, thighs feels nice. Breathe, relax your neck. Maybe finding some little movements. Maybe those movements move with your breathing. And keeping your back knee down, back to a tabletop, left knee back, and then walk yourself all the way down to your belly. Lay flat on the mat, forehead to the mat. Take a breath and then come up onto your elbows. So your elbows are under your shoulder. Make your legs comfortable, press your hips into the mat and then relax. Any muscles you don't need to hold this Sphinx pose, breathe. I love to roll my neck in this position. When we change the position of our bodies, it tends to make the small joint movements, wrist, ankles, neck, feel a little different. Stillness is great in some of these recovery, restorative poses. But if we get too bored, doing small joint movements is a nice way to make them feel good. Okay, coming back down to your belly, bend your knees, kick your heels to your butt, 
Lift your chest, press your hands into the mat, and then press your hips back to a tabletop. We're gonna move into a squat here. So check where your toes are, tuck your toes at about hip width, they're a little bit wider. Knees are wide, walking hands back until we start to come up onto our toes. In this nice deep squat, legs are fully bent. Think about making your spine straight as you sink your weight back. Maybe your heels come to the ground, arms out for balance. And we sit here in a deep squat. Again, maybe, maybe in stillness <clears throat> or maybe with some little movements for sure breathing. And then one of my favorite movements, try to make this easy and relaxed, is to go from a squat to a standing forward fold. So hands come to the mat, head drops, and the hips lift just enough to where your belly stays connected to your thighs, but you feel a stretch in the back of your legs. Maybe head rocks side to side. Maybe you grab opposite elbows and just hang heavy here, bending your knees enough to keep your belly flat on the top of your thighs. Entire spine releases with the weight of your head. And then moving nice and slow between those two poses again. So squatting back heel butt to heels head up straight spine i'm just going to change my position so you guys can see a little different angle here in the squat you can press elbows to knees and then when we move to the forward fold toes point straight ahead butt lifts head drops take a breath And then find a little rhythm moving between the two. And from the next forward fold that you're in, taking your time to come halfway up, hands to your hips, looking forward, take a breath. And then stand all the way up, hands to hips, feet hip width apart, toes in line, lift your toes, spread your toes, move your hips side to side, a little front to back. Make it feel good. Let's go arms overhead for a nice side stretch. Grab your right arm hand right wrist with your left arm send your hips over to the right maybe looking up back to center switch your grip right hand left wrist lean to the right hips to the left move a couple times side to side just enough where it feels good. Don't need to push it too hard. Keep breathing. Nice. Locking your feet out, heel toe to a place that you start to feel a little tightness in your hips. Hands behind your back. Lift your chest, press your hips. Nice little straddle here. And hands can come to your knees, tops of your thighs, and start to bend one leg at a time, rocking side to side. Bending your knees 
as much as feels good, you can start to lift the straight leg toes. Maybe hands come to the ground for a little support as you bend all the way down, sitting on that heel, either on your toes, or you can try with a flat foot. You can try to balance, super ninja pose. Keep that chest lifted, spine nice and straight. Awesome work. Turn back to face the short edge of your mat. Back into a squat and we're gonna rock and roll. So grabbing your shins or the back of your thighs, let your butt fall to the mat and roll out your spine. Nice and easy. Try to be relaxed here. Use your legs for momentum. And then stopping upside down, starting on your shoulders. If you're falling down, it's a hard, hard to get your hips up. Use your elbows into the mat and use your hands to walk your hips up, resting on your shoulders. Your neck shouldn't feel any pressure unless you're really comfortable in this pose. It's a really great one to practice breathing and take it as deep as feels comfortable for you to breathe. If you can't breathe, it's too deep. Hands can also come overhead, maybe even grabbing your feet. Upside down guard, plow pose, more of a straight legs, toes to the mat. You can also bring your knees down to your ears. Got to be fairly comfortable here. I could not do this when I first started. It took years, but it definitely helps my guard retention to be comfortable and relaxed upside down. If you're on your shoulders, you can also swing your hips a little side to side. I really love this for a, a shoulder massage. Just melting your body into the mat. And when you're done, you feel good upside down, let that back roll back to the mat. Reach in between your legs. See if you can grab your feet. Shins or ankles is fine too. If you can grab our feet, put your feet together. Butterfly pose. Recline. Happy butterfly. Just letting the hips open, letting the back relax. Big deep breaths with the nose. Letting one of your legs kick out straight, interlacing fingers. <clears throat> Either side, left or right first, I got my left knee hugging towards my left armpit. <clears throat> right leg is straight. Wind removing pose. Letting that lower back relax and stretching the hip of the bent leg. We can totally relax and breathe or we can play a little bit with the engagement of the right leg, of the straight leg, pressing the heel away, flexing the toes back, pressing the leg down into the mat. Not intense, but just a little bit to feel the change in sensation in the position. You can also roll ankles in this pose, feels really nice. Keep your shoulders, neck, face. Real, real soft. And then transitioning to a twist, push your right foot, uh, the straight leg foot into the mat and scoot your hips a few inches away from that leg. And then let your knees fall towards 
where your straight leg was. I was stretching my left knee, my left hip. So I'm twisting to the right, looking over my left shoulder, left arm heavy on the mat, arms in a T or your one of your hands can rest on the top knee. Gentle, even spine twist. Breathe deep into the belly. Coming back to center, use the feet to center the hips. Hugging right knee, or if you did the right knee last time, hugging the left knee in towards the armpit with interlaced fingers, straightening the other leg, maybe pressing that straight leg heel away, pressing the leg into the mat, or maybe just relaxing everything here. If you want to feel more sensation in the hip that you're stretching, you can deepen your grip with a, maybe a gable grip over the shin, or even a full rear naked choke grip. And that same side arm going elbow to shin or knee, the Dan Severn, Desev, over your naked. Get a nice stretch and relax, breathe. Move into a twist, bump your hips to, from me the right, to that bent knee side, and then let your legs drop to the left side, stack your legs on top of each other, right arm out to a T, left arm on top of your knees. Make little adjustments until you have that Spinal twist, somewhat even from top to bottom. And then breathe, big, deep belly breaths. Nice, knees back to center, hips back to center. One last nice hip opener here, figure four stretch. Keep your left foot on the mat, straighten your right leg, kick it up to the ceiling, and then bend your knee and bring your right ankle to the top of your left thigh. Reach in between your legs with your right arm and interlace your fingers on the left shin or thigh something so you feel a nice stretch in your right hip as your lower back relaxes on the mat you're not rounding curling too much relax into the stretch let gravity do most of the work maybe subtly pressing your right knee away from your shoulder make it feel good breathe Put that left foot back on the mat. Let's do a gentle twist here. So bring your arms out to a T, at least your elbows, and then let your foot and knee fall to the left side, and then your knee fall to the right side, pivoting on your 
planted foot, shoulders staying flat. Just a couple times, feels nice. Back to center, plant that left foot, lift your hips, get a little engagement in your glutes and your low back. Back down, lift up again. Nice. Windshield wipe your feet, just drawing circles. Move your knees and feet through space. Plant your right foot, kick your left foot up to the ceiling. We're going figure four, right side, or left hip, I guess, but left ankle to your right thigh. Reach through, grab your thigh or your shin, and then relax your back flat on the mat, maybe walking your shoulder blades underneath you a little bit so you can be super relaxed in your back. Nice stretch in your hip, big deep breaths. These poses we do in this session, you're going to get more benefits the longer you do them. A lot of these stretches, you can relax into them for 5-10 minutes, no problem. That really allows the fascia to release. We only got 30 minutes, so we move through fairly quickly, but a lot of these poses it's nice to spend a lot of time, put on a little music, take a little puff of your favorite herb, and let your body recover from hard training. Help you sleep at night too, with less tension in your body. Let that go. Oh, let's do the side to side here. So planting your right foot. And letting your left foot, right knee fall to the right side. Back to center, over to the left side. In my opinion, the purpose of yoga and the beauty of yoga lies in learning to listen to your body exploring sensations and poses that are new at first and then you become familiar with them. Back to center and lift hips up, little one foot bridge. So in the beginning, these poses feel more strenuous, more weird, and then your body begins to adapt as you practice more. And we're not trying to stress our body at all. In recovery yoga, we're really trying to stay calm and relaxed. That's why the breath is so important. The pose is kind of secondary to the breath. And this process of learning how to listen to your body is a never ending journey. Just like jujitsu, you're constantly evolving and learning and changing with your body as it learns, evolves and chains, changes. Final pose, reclined cobblers, reclined butterfly, feet together, maybe a, a foot, foot and a half from your hips. Find something that feels good. If it's really intense on your hips, you can use pillows or little blocks underneath your knees, support you a little bit. I like to get some traction in my low back by putting thumbs up on my hip creases and straightening my arms as I relax and breathe. I feel my spine grow a little longer. Adjust shoulders and head. Adjust the whole position so you're super comfortable and gravity is giving you a little stretch in your hips. Walk those shoulders underneath you. Take a few deep breaths. Close your eyes. Final restorative pose. Try to get to a point where you can be still after you take a couple deep breaths. Just let your breath be normal and relaxed. Observe your body. Observe your breath. 
you can fall asleep in this Shavasana corpse pose, get maximum benefits. That's the kind of relaxation we want. And this ability to be calm and relaxed helps our bodies feel good after our friends try to break it. Suggest you stay in this pose. Ultimate relaxation, maybe straightening your legs if the hips are getting too intense. Stay here for as long as you possibly can, as long as your schedule allows. And if you're out of time, like we are, rolling over to one side, sitting up, cross leg, nice and straight spine. Give yourself a little smile and a big thanks to yourself for putting this time into your body. You'll appreciate it. Keep coming back. Mat time on this mat helps for mat time on the more fun mat, but this can be fun too. So I hope you enjoyed it. With love from Wellness for Jiu-Jitsu, Submission Yogi. Have a great day. See you next time.